I've got a question here about blood glucose levels for obese patients. We're given a population mean and a standard deviation. And we're looking at a researcher who thinks a diet high in raw cornstarch will have a positive or perhaps a negative effect on blood glucose levels. A sample of 30 patients who've tried the raw cornstarch diet have a mean glucose level of 140 and test the hypothesis the raw cornstarch had an effect well there's a lot of information there let's break it down into small steps the first thing i want to do is state the null and the alternate hypotheses if you aren't comfortable with stating the null hypothesis then you may want to check out my previous video on how to state the null and alternate hypotheses my null hypothesis that's h sub zero is the accepted fact, which is blood glucose levels are 100. Our population mean is 100. So I'll put mean is equal to 100. And the alternate hypothesis is the one we are testing. Well, the researcher thinks the raw cornstarch has an effect. He doesn't know whether it's going to be higher or lower. So basically, our alternate hypothesis is going to be that the mean, mu, is not equal to 100 so it could be greater it could be smaller we don't know all we're interested in finding out is was there a difference the next step is we want to state the alpha level if the alpha level is not mentioned in the question then just use the standard 0 0.05 which is five percent and what that means is if you take a normal distribution curve our alpha level is the area in one tail but we have a two-tailed test because the mean is not equal to 100 if we had the mean is say greater than 100 then this would be a one-tailed test because it's just going in one direction or if the mean was less than 100 that's also one directional. So we have a two-tailed test. These areas add up to 5%. So we've got half in one tail, 2.5%, and half in the other tail, 2.5%. Now what we want to actually do with this alpha level is find a z-score. We want to find this z-score here. Because this is our rejection region. And I will cover the rejection region in just a moment. For right now, I want to find this z-score. I'm going to use a right-hand z-table. The right-hand z-table tells us the area from the mean to any z-score. One half of a bell curve is 50%. This little area is 2.5%, which means this area between the mean and this z-score must be 47.5 percent i'm going to look this up in the z table i'll actually be looking up the decimal 0.475 so here's my z table i want to find 0.475 in the center of the table And there's 0.475, it's a z-score of 1.9, that's in the row, 1.9, and if I scroll up, 1.96. So my z-score at this boundary is 1.96, and because the curve is symmetrical, that also means this z-score is 1.96, but this side is negative so we've got negative 1.96 and positive 1.96 and the last step is we want to calculate our test statistic and we want to find out if that test statistic falls into this rejection region or if it falls into this rejection region if it does we can reject the null hypothesis and how we do that is with a formula z equals x bar is the mean minus mu of zero that's the population mean all over the standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size n well we're given all of this information in the question so it's basically just plug in and solve my x bar my sample mean was given in the question as 140 
minus my population mean. That's 100 divided by the standard deviation. 15 divided by the square root of the sample size, which was given as 30. And if I figure this out on a calculator, I get 14.6. One final step, there's one small thing left to do. And that is we're going to take this value and we're going to see if it falls into one of our rejection regions. Well, 14.6 is much larger than 1.96. This is a z-score. And if it was going to go on a normal distribution curve, it would go way over to the right here, which is in this rejection region. It's larger than the z-score. So we can reject the null hypothesis, which means our alternate hypothesis is now in place that the mean is not equal to 100.